not doing well. Coming down with something. My head feels like it's between uh, between uh, two vice grips. You know what I mean? Hey, <clears throat> good morning, Ethan. How are you? Oh, I'm uh, I'm not feeling too hot, but I'm, I'm doing all right. Oh, Coming okay. down with something, unfortunately. Oh, really? Yeah, my head feels yes. like it's between two vice grips. Uh -huh. But I'm here, man. I'm I'm plugging and chugging. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just got to so, keep going. That's right. Good morning, Tyler. Like um, a while back, um, I had like my, I hurt my shoulder while doing like curling and benching, and it really upset me because I had to stay off of it for a few weeks to let it like. And I had to do like um, it w it sucked because I had to do a lot of like muscle exercises to like strengthen it again, and I really just wanted to go, but I had to like kind of compromise. But as long as you're, that's the thing. So it's like as long as you're doing something um it's it's fine it just the best thing to do is just even, even if it's just a little bit yeah i totally agree with you buddy so you're you're pretty mature for your age and you know you know what you need to do thank so you i appreciate good. it that's good all right tyler i just got your message <clears throat> thanks for letting me know good morning everybody get ready to rock and roll here we're gonna take a look at today's agenda here i put it in canvas and it's on the screen uh, you're going to need a keyboard and you're going to need a graphing, Desmos graphing calculator here to finish all your section three, four. So please get ready. Uh, and we will, we'll do a little Q and A on your homework first. I asked you guys to, to finish a few problems. And then I told you guys that we would finish the rest in class together. Okay. So I'll start with Q and A uh, here in a minute. Uh, you guys have access to the answers, but I'll show you the, just the end results. And if you need to work few, uh, through a few of them <clears throat> for any reason, let me know. I'm not feeling too hot. I'm coming down with something. So bear with me here if, I'm, if I don't look or sound like am I normal because I'm <clears throat> not feeling too hot. Uh, but I did want to miss my session with you guys because we only see each other twice a week and it's important to keep the keep everything going rocking and rolling is it, am i right or what got to keep it going right got to power through it even if you're not feeling the greatest and i got to keep on doing what kayla's doing right there keep hydrating keep drinking water good girl okay well it's like i just said it's good to see you guys let's start off with high and low of the week today's thursday it's almost the end of the week we've got two more days to go today and tomorrow before a weekend here. Uh, tell me how your week's going. Give me a quick high and low in the chat as I admit everybody in the class here. And then please turn your cameras on. Uh, I did get a message from uh, one of my, from Tyler, why he can't, but so I understand that why you can't once in a while, but please turn your cameras on, do your best. Uh, as I just told you guys, I, I'm not feeling great at all. And yet you see me, you hear me and you, you hear Ainsworth going. So. Uh, let's start with high and low. So Preston said hi as you went to the snow. Uh, Preston, where'd you go? Just turn your mic on and talk to me. Uh, I went to like my friend's cabin. It was like in like near Lake Arrowhead. Nice. And it was that's like always, really, really snowy. Yeah, that's always fun. You know, I mean, who doesn't like going and trampling in the snow and being a kid? And did you do any angels? Of course I did. Okay. All <laughs> right. You know what? I still do that and I'm 53. <laughs> Uh, and what do you have to get surgery on? What's going on? Um, I have to get my tonsils out tomorrow. Hmm. Okay, well, hang in there. Uh, hang in there, that's always a big deal. Let me know how that goes. See, Valentina, low needs some sleep. Yeah, I, I get it. Uh, 
Ainsworth forgot to set his alarm last night. And so my wife woke me up and said, hey, man, you got to get going here because I usually get up early, as you guys know. Uh, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to get ready, but I got up. Uh, her high was that you got a light box for art. Oh, nice. Uh, Tyler said, let me see. No, uh, not really a high and low. Okay, cool. Well, that's okay. Sometimes, uh, Tyler, non-eventful is, is good, you know. Chris went snowboarding in a mountain high all day. Uh, are you talking about yesterday, Chris? Or are you talking about over the weekend? Well, um, Tuesday, I think. <clears throat> no. Oh, so you weren't with me Tuesday? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, hmm. Did you get caught up? Did you work on the yeah. session? Yeah, I got my stuff done. Well, you're you're pretty good usually, so I'm proud of you. All right. So if you, if you play hard, you got to work hard, right? You got to make it up, okay? Uh, my son was uh, there yesterday, but you know, he's out of high school. He's, he's in flight school right now. So his schedule is different than you guys. Uh, but he said he had a blast yesterday up there. I think he went to Bear Mountain. And did some snowboarding with about a bunch of guys up there. Natalie uh, got uh, to watch your TV show and Lo was have a lot of homework, yeah. Well, Natalie, good news for you is that we're going to finish everything in class today. Uh, and so you don't have to worry about it. So we, uh, so that's good news. Is, am I right, Natalie? Finish everything during class, submit, you know, get it all off your shoulder. Okay. Yeah, we will have a little review that I'm going to give you guys later on that you can do over the next few days. But it's like two or three questions from each section, about maybe eight or 10 problems. And for you, no big deal. Okay. And then we'll quiz on Monday, but uh, I'm at least we're going to finish all our work here in class today together. Ethan Tsai was doing real good with your exercise and growing better, as we were talking about. Very good. There's been a lot of work, though, in regard to school. Uh, not in respect to my class, right? Must be in what class yeah, are you talking no, about? No, um, I had um, a lot of labs and stuff. And so if you want a good grade on those, you need to. Um, like do your research and make yeah. sure to fill that to detail. Um, also, it's partly my fault because I have a habit of not liking to procrastinate. So I usually like to get a lot of, I, I like to get all the available work I can done um, the day I have access to it. But it's just like, cause I, I cannot do anything if I'm thinking about work. I can't like hang out with friends. I can't, um, yeah. like go outside. I just, just yeah. I have to know it's done. <laughs> You know, yeah. so same thing with me. I cannot sleep too well if I have a lot of teacher stuff to do. So I have to get up, bust it all out. And then after I'm done and I, I take all that stress off my shoulders, then I can have a really good night's sleep. Otherwise I'm restless and I can't sleep well. Um, so I'm the same way. Talia's high was uh, weeks almost over. Yeah. Okay. Work hard during the week. And then you're looking, uh, looking forward to the weekend. It looks like, so that's good. Talia, do you have any uh, weekend plans since you're looking forward towards the weekend? No, not really. Okay, we're just looking forward to relax maybe. And then uh, Kayla's high was being more productive school-wise. It always feels good when you're productive. And then uh, low is that you don't have a whole lot of free time. Yeah, so Kayla, the weekend's right around the corner in Tiger. And, and not only that, we're gonna finish everything in class. So speaking of that, let's get started here. Here we go. So look at your screen, guys. Uh, and let's get started. Let's do Q&A first, okay? And I'm only gonna show a few problems at a time because I'm gonna, I expanded it here. So everybody look at number one, check your work. I, the blue ones that I circled in the margin are the ones that I had you uh, asking you to do. And you have access to all these answers. And so these are not the full blown answers. We'd have to go to the side and do all the side work here to develop the answers. But uh, number one, the monthly payment is 208.48. The interest that you have to pay off the loan is five thousand seventeen sixty. You guys speak up immediately. Don't wait because I'm going to scroll down. If you have a question, you got to speak up immediately because you guys were supposed to be able to. You guys were supposed to do these four problems before today, and if you didn't, shame on you. You guys got to get caught up. Okay, number two, uh, or excuse me, number four. What is number four? I didn't write it down here. Number four. Okay, so let me write it down. So number four, what the heck? Oh, we did number four. Okay, so number six, uh, five and six I had you do. So number five, the monthly payment is 167.39 and the interest that you had to pay was 2,052.08.
and number six was 12,568.96. Okay, any questions on one, five, or six that you guys were working on? And again, when, when you turn this into Canvas, if you don't have all your work shown like I did, and I keep explaining this, uh, but people keep turning in homework that's not properly stepped out. If I don't see all your work, like you you see mine right up through here, you're not gonna get a 10 out of 10. You, you probably won't even get a seven out of 10, which is passing. Uh, you have to step things out because I provide the answers, okay? And it's that simple. You guys gotta know what you're doing. Um, if, for num oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, um, Jade. Uh, for number six, did you use the monthly payment um, formula? Is that? Yeah. I was like, yeah. I couldn't get that answer. That's why I was like, I'll try to do it again. Maybe I did something wrong, but I tried doing the monthly payment formula and I couldn't get um, that answer. So maybe I did something wrong. Well, let's, I'm... Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's set up the, uh, the monthly payment formula for that. Let me see. So that's the 35,000, yeah. Okay, so let's go off to the side, Jaden. And why don't you show me how to set that up and then we'll check it. Uh, let's do number six right here, so. <clears throat> and again, we're, we're gonna be, you're gonna be reviewing over the four sections over the weekend and we're gonna do a comprehensive quiz on, on Monday over the four sections. So Jaden, it's probably a good idea that we work through, uh, check your setup. Okay, so look right here. We've got a, a principal of 35,000. Uh, our interest rate is five and three eighths percent. So we got to change that to a decimal, uh, Jaden. And we got to check your decimal on that. And then we're talking about a 12 year loan here. And the question is how much interest uh, do you have to pay? Okay, so let's write that stuff down. So the principal of the loan, 35,000. The interest rate is five and three eighths percent. So we have to change that to a decimal. And then the time in years uh, on number six, it's 12 years. Okay. And we have to calculate the interest. We have to do that three-step process again. So actually monthly payment, monthly payment first. Okay. And then we have to calculate the total paid and then you have to figure out the interest. It's that three-step process there. So first of all, Jaden, just turn on your mic, buddy, and talk to me here. What what decimal did you use for your interest rate? Yeah, I used decimal. That's how I did wrong. <laughs> I used a decimal. That's why I did wrong, I'm assuming. I said five, three, eights. And I'm guessing that's why I did wrong, I'm assuming. Well, what is five and three eights? Let's, let's figure that out. Let's make sure you know how to convert it. So go to Desmos right mm -hmm. here. And what's three eighths as a decimal? Uh, point, point, yeah, point three seven five. Okay, so let's go back. And so this is five point three seven five percent. Uh, this supposed to, that's supposed to be R right there. Uh, <clears throat> so what is that as a decimal? Just point three seven five. I'm assuming right. No. Guys, you have, whenever you change a decimal to percent, excuse me, a percent to a decimal, you divide it by 100. You got to shift it left two places. So what should it be? 37.5. No, you know, no. <laughs> look, at, look at the screen. It's five and three eighths or 5.375. So when you convert that to a decimal, the 5.375. Oh, it'd be point, uh, zero five, three, seven, five. That's what it'd be. There you go. Sorry. And, okay, and then so uh, Braden was helping you out there in the chat. Uh, Rebecca, are you good with the decimal that Braden mentioned there? Are you good with that? Okay, so it's 0 0.05375. So if the interest rate was the issue, either for you, uh, Jaden, or Rebecca, then you just have to enter that number there, the 0 0.05375 into the monthly payment calculator or the formula, and then you're good to go. Okay. Jaden, you want me to continue on this, or do you want to just just fix oh. your decimal? I, I think I got it. Yeah, I think I got it. Yeah. Okay, Rebecca, are you good? I lost. Uh, yeah, I got it. I had to let my cat in. Sorry. Okay. So okay. All right. So let's um let's go back here. So we. Any questions on one through six? Be honest with me, guys, before I continue and, and 
work on other things with you. Okay, let's go to number 11. <clears throat> number 11 dealt with the uh, same sort of thing. I came up with uh, two different interests, total interests, one for Sunset Park, one for Carroll's Bank. And the question of the, that was asked was that which loan had the lowest interest rate, keyword lowest. All right, so the first interest for the first bank had the interest of 25, 60, 80. And then the second one had 20, was $2,608 and 32 cents. And obviously the lowest one is the first bank right here. This is the lowest. I like that one. That's like a test question because you have to calculate a couple different interests using the three-step process. And you, you have to com obviously compare them and think, so, okay, which one's the lowest? And it's, in this case, it's pretty obvious. Okay, any questions on what you've done from Tuesday till now? Don't be shy, guys. Okay, well, there's no questions. Okay, so let's continue. Let's maximize our time. Let's talk about number 12. And <clears throat> this one here requires your monthly payment formula. Uh, I, no, no, actually the term formula. Okay, so let's, let's just read it and let's, let's go for it here. All right, dun, 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 dun. Oh, no, it's actually not your term formula, monthly payment formula. Okay, so number 12, JFK Bank offers a $50,000 loan. There's your principal, so right there, there's P. At interest rate, 4.875%. Uh, These are actual numbers here, guys. I'm going through a loan right now, a home loan, and I'm doing all this stuff, okay, believe it or not. So R right there, R is equal to 0 0.04875, so we know the interest rate and it has to be paid back over three to 15 years. And then this one's different here. It says write the monthly payment formula for the loan. And when you write a formula, it is in terms of a variable. It says let T represent the number of years. And that's the key, all right? T represents the number of years. So in terms of T, so let's write this down. In terms of T. So whenever you write a formula, you use variables. So all you do is input the time and then it spits out the monthly payment. That's what a formula is all about. Now the monthly payment formula that you guys have <clears throat> that you know, looks like this. So let's put the formula in red, okay? So M is equal to, and this should be on your formula page for, the, for your quiz coming up on, on Monday. All right, M is equal to P, the principal, divided by M over uh, 12, because it's, a, you know, we're doing this monthly. So, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, not now, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of R divided by 12. All right, times one plus R divided by 12 raised to the 12T power. Well, that's like the compound interest right there. All right, divided by, okay, the same thing basically, one plus R divided by 12 to the 12T power, and then you got this minus one. So know that it, notice that M is in terms of three variables. It's in terms of P, R, and T. There are three variables here. The, there is the P for the principal. That's the first one. The second variable that I see is the interest rate R, which we know. Okay, it's right here. It's 0 .048, 0 0.04875. And it also involves uh, the third one here, which is called T, okay? So P, R, and T. And when you write a formula in terms of T, you just substitute what you know about P and R because you're given P is 50,000. You're given R and all you do is substitute those in to make the formula happen. So here we go. You just substitute them. It's actually quite easy. So you take your $50,000 loan, that's a principal. 
multiply it by r divided by 12, but not r, you know what r is. So 0 0.04875 divided by 12 times the uh, one plus r divided by 12, which we just wrote down. Okay, and raise it to the 12t power. Keep t in there. Okay, it's in terms of t. When you write a formula, it's in terms of something. So there's your variable there that you need. All right, I'll divide it by one plus 0 0.04875 divided by 12 to the 12t power. You keep t in there because you don't know what t is. And then of course you gotta subtract one. <clears throat> so if t was five, you just substitute five in there and it spits out the monthly payment. If t was any number between three and 15, all you do is substitute the number in for t, which stands for the number of years. Like if t was 10, you put 10 inside and you get the monthly payment over 10 years. If t was 12, you substitute 12 in there and you'll get your monthly payment for 12 years and et cetera, okay? Give me a thumbs up on the screen if you're following me here. Formula means in terms of t, okay, every time. Now the, uh, now it says write the total interest formula. So we're gonna use this. Okay, so before we do that, let's go back to a previous problem that we've already done. Let's take a look at the three-step process because that's what we have to do. Okay, so let me pick one. Okay, everybody look at this one here. So this is uh, 17,000. So this one was for number two. Okay. So everybody look at, just look at the screen right here. This is the three-step process that we've been working all from sections three and four. So it's a three-step process. Okay, step one, uh, we have to calculate the monthly payment. Everybody just look at the screen for a moment because I'm going to take this and apply it to the formula here in a minute. All right, now to get the total paid, to get the total paid, which is step two, in this case, this is over 60 months this, in this problem because it was a five-year loan. You have to pull, multiply it by the number of months. So step two, you multiply it by number of months in general. It depends on the length of time, but it's number of months, okay? Number of months. And then step three, you take the total paid, which we know, and subtract the principal P. Okay, one more time. Step one, we calculate the monthly payment. This is monthly payment here. Step two, we calculate the total paid by multiplying it by, by the number of months, whatever that may be, because it changes for every problem. Step three, we simply take the total paid and subtract the principal, which is what you're borrowing. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, now we know that, okay, let's apply it to this. Okay, now we want a monthly in, or total interest formula. Okay, so write down I equals, okay, so I equals because we're, we're dealing with interest formula, okay? So we have up top, we have this, uh, this, this formula up here right above in step A. It's this formula here. That stands for the monthly payment. Now it says, let T represent the number of years. Okay, so T, let's over here on the left, T represents the number of years. Number of years. That's always the case, by the way. <laughs> T is always a number of years. Uh, it's called the term, okay? Now, if we take this, this formula here and let's bring it down and use it here. So 50,000, I'm just gonna rewrite it. Times 0.4875 divided by 12. I'm just gonna rewrite it real quick because we're writing a formula here. So 0 0.04875 divided by 12 to the 12 T power. <clears throat> just bring it down and rewrite it. Just do what I'm doing. Okay, now let's give this a hug. Let's put parentheses around it. We have to do something with this. Okay, that is the monthly payment right there. Now, what's step two in our process to calculate the interest? What's step two? What do we need to multiply this by? Just turn on your mic and talk to me. What do you multiply the monthly payment by to get the total payment? I just talked about this in the previous page. What do you, what's step two? What do you multiply the monthly payment by? The number of months. 
Okay, but how do you calculate the number of months for T years? We got T years here. So in general, what do you do? If you, whatever number of years it is, what do, you, what do you multiply the number of years by to get the total number of months? There you go, Natalie. Okay, you multiply by 12. And Shannon, very good. So put a times here, times 12T. Okay, 12T is the number of months. So let's, this right here is the number of months. 12T represents the number of months. So you take the number of months, 12T, multiply it by your monthly payment. Now this entire thing, this entire thing is the total paid as a formula. Now, what do you do to the total paid? And what, this is step three now. What do you do to the total paid <clears throat> to get to the interest? What do you, okay, there you go. That's uh, <laughs> good, good, good. You subtract the principal, which in this case, if you read the problem, you subtract the principal all the time, which in this case, that's correct too, Kayla, uh, which is 50,000. So we're gonna put down minus 50,000. Very good. And that is your formula for the interest. So if you knew what, how much time we were talking about in years, T, if I told you what T was, all you do is enter this, enter T in here and you would, uh, it would calculate the interest automatically for you. So if you put this big formula into Desmos, which we could do, okay? And you substitute a T value in there, like T equal four or T equal five or T equal six, you know, whatever you want, it will automatically calculate the interest. Okay, so the difference in this problem is the word formula. You wanna write a formula because you don't know what T is. T is just a variable representing some number between, between three and uh, 15 in this case. So step one was part A. We calculate the monthly payment as a formula. Step two, we multiply by 12T, which is the number of months. And then step three, as you guys said in the chat, we subtract the principal, which in this case is 50,000. Who's following me today? Put their hands up, come on. Who's following me? All right, okay, there we go. Dun, 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 dun. So I feel, who do I look like right now? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. Come on, come on, play with me. What do I look like? Who runs up the steps like this? Dun, dun, dun. Someone's got to know. There we go, Colson. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. I grew up with Rocky Balboa, believe it or not. Okay. So now we uh, let's transition. Okay, here, big Desmos time. Okay, Desmos graphing. So I got to shrink this down. Let's get Desmos graphing calculator up here on the screen. Everybody open up Desmos graphing calculator and it would really be nice if you had one of these, okay? Your keyboards uh, to type in all your numbers because here we go. So when you open up Desmos here and hopefully you guys got an account now, okay? Hopefully you logged in and have an account because you need one, sign up. All you do is put your email address in there like I did. I save all my work. Here's all my work for all my classes throughout the years. Okay, I can pull up tests, quizzes, example problems, all that kind of stuff. And you guys need to sign in with your email, your school email and set up an account because you get to save your work, okay? All right, now we're gonna call this section here, right here, call it three, four. So, um, so new blank graph, okay. Click on untitled graph at the very top, do what I'm doing at the very top left, click on untitled and put the title in three, three dash four. So three dash four, cause you're gonna save this work. It's called loan calculations and regressions. So put the title in and it saves the title and it saves it to your account. And it's gonna be really nice. We do a lot of Desmos work in here. And at the end of the chapter, when it's time, come time to test, if you wanna go back to the previous sections and look at all your work, uh, you can, you can just pull it up. So as long as you name it and save it, which we're gonna do today, you can save all your work for the future because at the end of the unit, like I just said, we can go back and review, review what you learned, you know, you know, weeks before. Okay, so now we need to, uh, let me minimize this. Okay, we need to put this table of values in. Look at this. We got to enter this table in and do some linear aggression. We're going to do three things together here today. One's review and two are new. So last, uh, I don't know, last semester during one of the chapters, I talked about how to do uh, linear regression on the Desmos, but it's been like a month or two. So we have to do it again. So that's review. 
And then secondly, we're going to have to uh, learn what quadratic regression is to do to make predictions. OK, regression is a tool, a mathematical tool to make predictions, uh, because in the table here, it gives us uh, loan balances for years zero through 20, but not it doesn't give us a balance for eight and a half or eight and a quarter. It's not in the table. It's not in there. So we have no idea what the balance would be like in the middle of of these numbers here. So we have no idea. But if we had a regression equation that approximates this data, we could approximate any, any loan balance we want between zero and 20 uh, that is between, let's say eight and nine or between 10, 11 or between 11 and 12. Okay, so we're gonna be doing that and we're gonna be doing uh, the cubic regression, third degree. So the uh, linear is first degree equations. Okay, so let's write this down. It's y equals mx plus b. Okay, it's first degree. So the question is this data, is it linear? I don't know, we're gonna graph it. And if it's not linear, this, this model here, the linear regression model would, would probably be terrible. It'd be a, a terrible predictor of values uh, if it's not linear, which it probably isn't by the way. Okay, and quadratic, that's different. So quadratic, uh, that's y is equal to, okay, ax, squared, write that, this down because we're going to use it here in Desmos here in a minute, plus a bx plus c. It's that famous quadratic. It's a second degree equation. Is this quadratic? I don't know. We're going to, we're going to, there's a way to tell when you look at the graph and we'll do that together. Okay. And then the third one cubic is third degree. So this one here, you saw this in algebra two, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. That's a third degree uh, equation here. So which one of these is the best predictor? Which one of these fits the data? Which curve goes through these data points? Okay, so which regression line or regression, I'm going to call it a curve because these are curves. So which regression curve uh, fits the data the best? This is our first goal or our first big question here. Fits, okay. The data the best and when i say that does which one goes through the data points basically and the only way to tell is by graphing it looking at it and i'm going to do all of that with you guys okay so having said all that make sure you write that down because you have to understand what what linear looks like what what does quadratic look like what does cubic look like and so on now what i do is i use my nine keypad okay when i enter all these numbers in and i'm going to do it as you're doing it so you start with a table. So let's go to Desmos right now and hit the plus sign above here. You've done this with me before. Select table. The first thing you do is you enter in the X values, which is uh, the first column there, zero through 20. And make sure you put down zero, okay? So what's cool about that? Watch me first. There's something cool about Desmos and I've talked about this before uh, in Excel actually. Excel and Desmos uh, use spreadsheet technology and they remember formulas or patterns. So when you enter the first three numbers in, watch this, zero, enter, one, enter, two, enter, three, enter, and then you just press the enter button, look what happens. It, it knows the pattern, it's adding one. So go all the way to 20, boom, it's that simple. So enter in zero, one, two, and three, and then just keep hitting the enter button, boom, 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 all the way to all the way to 20 and then get your cursor back up to Y1 and put, and you got to put all those Y values in there. And yes, they are eight digit numbers. Okay. And if you get one digit off, then your answers are going to be different. So you, <laughs> you got to be really careful here, including me, because I'm going to be doing this too. Okay. I do everything with my students. I don't just say, go do it. Okay. I do everything with you guys. All right. So start entering in. Okay. 230,000. Again, and just hit the enter button and then it shifts down. And check your numbers as you go, because like I said, if you get one digit off, uh, our answers are not gonna be the same. So go slow, double check. Usually what I do is I look at three digits at a time on my paper here. And, and then I check it on the screen after I type it in and then I go down to the next one. So I got one hand on my paper that I'm, I'm, I'm keeping track with my left hand and then I'm working with my right hand. 
uh, entering the values in on the on the keyboard. That's what I'm doing. And this is not easy for me today because I, like I said, I'm not feeling well at all. My head feels like it's between two vice grips right now. <clears throat> it's pounding. So hopefully I can pull this off with no mistakes. If you guys have questions as we do this, just speak up, don't be shy. And then what I usually do is I go up here and I pick a random one and I check it. So I'm just going to go up to the top here and I'm going to check the sixth, the seventh one here. So 185, 83, I have to give one sense. I check a few uh, just to double check my work before I continue. And just pick a few at random here. Okay, type in ready in the chat when you're ready to, uh, for the next step. <clears throat> I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> it takes a while to do this, doesn't it? <laughs>
Is anybody still working on this? Okay. <coughs> Matthew, are you ready? Okay. All right. First step is let's do the, uh, <coughs> the linear regression here. So notice that the loan balance is $230,000 at 5.5%. And this is over 20 years, obviously, zero to 20. Okay, go to the next line in Desmos, row two. And notice that at the top there, the green button says save. You might wanna hit save because I usually save it periodically throughout my work just in case something weird happens with a computer. And that way, if anything happens, you can recall this up and you don't have to redo this, okay? Okay, so let's enter in the, the linear regression line. So here we go. Now at the top of the table, it says X1, Y1. So when you enter in your regression line, you type in Y1 equals, or not equals, Y1. So you go, just get your keyboard, type in Y1. And you'll notice that it, there is a, it drops down and makes a little subscript. That just stands for your first regression line. Y1 is just your first regression line. That's all it stands for. Now, do not put equal sign. Does anybody remember from, I know this is first semester during a, in a previous chapter, but does anybody remember what symbol we use for the regression line? Wow, you guys remember, <laughs> that's good. It's the tilde. Now, everybody, it's on your keyboard and it's, it's, uh, it's in the upper, upper left-hand corner uh, to the left of the number one button. And you have to hit shift because it's uh, it's on the top. So go shift tilde and write that down in your notes, shift tilde. So go shift tilde and it looks like a little squiggly. Okay, there you go. Just like that, you guys, very good. So you know what it is. So regression lines always use the tilde. Write that down in your notes or on your worksheet. Okay. And then you type in MX1, so M x1 make sure you put it x1 there because the the column up above is not x it's x1 all right and then you go plus b so plus b uh and then you'll see your first regression line okay and then so right here uh let me let me screenshot this just so i can put it in in our lesson here and we'll talk about the numbers and what they mean Okay, so, so for your first regression line here, uh, we know that R squared is 0.97, R is negative uh, 0.9. So check this out, this value here, look here, this is your correlation coefficient. So let me write that down, correlation coefficient. Now this right here is very, very close to negative one. Now when we did this uh, <clears throat> uh, with each other back in the day, we, we talked, to, we had positive correlations. And I said that if the correlation coefficient was po close to one, positive one, it represented a strong positive correlation. This indicates that we have a strong negative correlation. And the reason why it's negative Actually, let me, let, let me see if you guys can figure this out. Why do you think it's negative and not positive? Because this is a negative correlation, not a positive correlation. Negative correlation here. Why do you think it's negative and not positive? Looking at the data. Is it because what's, what's happened? Mm -hmm. Say it again. Is it because it's decreasing over time? Yes. Okay, and the reason why. So every, let's write that down. So the, the loan value, uh, so this is a uh, loan balance is decreasing. So decreasing, uh, over time. 
And, and that's why you have a negative correlation there. Uh, if it was increasing over time, which would be bad for us, because <laughs> we want your loan, when you, have, when you take a loan out, you want it to decrease, not increase. Um, investments increase, but not, not loan balances, okay? But that's the reason why. Okay, and then, and then our, our actual equation is you take these values here and you substitute them in. And so y, uh, our, our equation looks like y equals negative 11,308, so negative 11,308.1 times x, and then plus this b coefficient, which is huge, all right, 247,674. This is your, this is your linear regression line for part A. You know the slope right here, and the slope is negative uh, 11,308, and then the y-intercept right here, because this slope-intercept is just a linear function, is that big number there. So the question is, does that fit the line? Uh, does that fit the data? You, you know, who knows, right? So, well, we're, we're going to find out right now. So let's see if that's the case. So I'm going to do something with you guys. We're going to expand this so you guys can see this. Now, right now, we don't see any points on the graph. We don't see anything because it's not scaled properly. So who remembers what to do? What, which, where do we go on Desmos to adjust the scale? And I'm not talking about using the plus or minus sign here. That you're gonna, that's tough because these values are six digit numbers. How do we adjust the scale on, in Desmos? What icon in Desmos do we use? Yes, okay. Okay, so up at the right-hand corner uh, is the wrench. Click Everybody click on the wrench and do what I do, okay? Now, the X values go from zero to 20. So on the X axis here, highlight the uh, first number here and let's change that to zero. Okay, look right there, just change that to zero. Uh, the X values go from zero to 20, so change it to 20, from zero to 20 and put your step at one. So it's gonna start counting by ones on the X axis. Your step is your increment. What are you counting by? Zero, one, two, three. So if the step's one, you're counting by ones. If you make it 0.5, it'll go 0, 0.5, one, 1 1.5, two, 2.5 and so on. Now your Y values go from zero to 230,000. So change your Y, the first Y value on the Y axis to zero and change your upper value, your maximum to 230,000. Make sure you put the right amount of zeros in there. And then your step, let's make it uh, 5,000. So you're counting by 5,000s on the vertical. Now, if you do that, you should be able to see your data. Give me a thumbs up on the screen if you see your data now. Okay, so on your, on your workbook here, write down uh, adjust the scale using the wrench icon. Make little notes to yourself. Adjust the scale by using the wrench icon. And that's gonna change from every problem to problem because obviously the numbers are gonna change. So you're gonna have to use some intelligent decisions on that. All right, but my first question is this, look at the data here, guys. Does that line in black, does it go through the data points? Yes or no? Give me yes, thumbs up, no thumbs down. Does it go through the data points? Does it actually run through the data points? Physically go through, I'm, I'm talking about all of them. Does it go through all the data points? Not some, but all, does it go through all? Okay, yes, yeah, so you guys are changing your opinion. Okay, it doesn't, it's, it's a decreasing trend. Yes, the line is decreasing, the points. The points actually are curved though, it's, it's a curve. So the linear function is not a good uh, line of best fit. Because yeah, it's decreasing. Yes, it goes down to the lower right. Okay, that's, if we had to use it and we didn't know about quadratic and cubic regression, then I guess we could use it, but it wouldn't be that good. All right, so the linear regression function is not the best. Okay, so we need a better tool. We need to get a curve, a regression curve, a quadratic regression curve, or maybe even cubic. Okay, and it's done the same way. So here we go, go down to third row. Now, before we put in the quadratic function, let me, let me go back to our lesson here. Now, look on the, on the left side here. Number 14, a quadratic equa uh, regression equation looks like AX squared. 
ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? So when I go to this one right here, I'm gonna type that in. I'm gonna type in y1, here we go again. Okay, type in y1 tilde, okay? Tilde, not equals. Okay, let me, I got, I need to pause here for a second, everybody, and, and help somebody out. So let me expand this because I don't want anybody to get lost. Okay, so going back to the wrench, uh, the x-axis, uh, I went from uh, zero, zero uh, to 20, and a step of one. And then on the y-axis, uh, we put in zero, zero here, just entering zero to, to 230,000. So 230,000. Braden, are you good with that, buddy? I'm sorry, I didn't see you, but did, are you good? Okay, thank you. All right, so let's go back to our function now that I've got everybody with me here. There we go. Uh, go Y1 tilde, so go shift tilde, and follow uh, the function on the left in red, okay? AX squared, so type in A, uh, X1. Now you gotta type in X1 now, and then you gotta square it. And the way you square it is by using the, uh, the symbol above the number six. Okay, the hat. Okay, so go shift six and use that and I'll put it in the exponent and then type in two. Or you could use the digital keyboard on Desmos too. You could do that. Hit the right arrow key to get out of the exponent plus BX1. You gotta make sure you type in X1 and not just X. All right, and then plus C. And that will give you your uh, your, um, let me expand this now. This will give you your quadratic regression line. And notice that it's second degree. It's a parabola, actually. If you zoom out, look at this. It's a downward parabola. And it's downward because A is negative. And as you guys know in algebra, you know, one and two, when the coefficient of A squared is negative, it's a downward parabola. And in red, you'll see a downward parabola. But if you zoom in, look. if you look really close here, uh, which one fits the data best? Which one goes through more points, the one in red or black, the linear or the quadratic? Give me a response in the chat, guys. Linear or quadratic? Which one goes through all the points in green? Okay, so either the red one or the quadratic one, right? It's better. But the question is, is it better than cubic? Or is cubic better than quadratic? I don't know. So uh, let me screenshot this just uh just to talk about it here. So we've got this quadratic one here. So let me bring it into the lesson here. So here's your quadratic function and it says write it to the nearest tenth. So let's do that real quick. <clears throat> so your values of A, B, and C, all you do is just substitute those in. So Y1 uh, is approximately A, which is approximately negative 307.3, so negative 307.3 times x squared, b is negative 5,161, 5, so minus, okay, so minus 5,061.2 times x, and then c is positive, so plus 228,000 actually, wow, huge, uh, and, uh, and 209. So there's your quadratic, uh, this is number 14, okay? Number 14. And this one's number 13. Now notice the R squared value compared to the previous R squared value. Now which, which R squared value uh, is closer to one? the first one for the linear or the second one for the quadratic, which R squared is closer to one? The first one or the second one? The first one's 0.978, the second one's 0.999. Which one's closer to red, the first one or the second one? Okay, yeah, it's obvious, okay, the second one. And that tells you that the quadratic function's a better fit than the linear. Write that down on your lesson somewhere. So right now, if you compare the R squared values, the quadratic function is a better fit. This is a better fit 
All right, then linear already. But the question is, is it better than cubic? I don't know. But I do know that it's a better fit than linear. And we know that because on the graph, it, it's, it should be obvious. The, the quadratic function in red goes through the points, whereas the linear function does not. Okay, so it is, it is seen on the graph, but uh, you know, statistically speaking, uh, R squared is closer to one. This is right down closer to one here, closer uh, to one. Okay, take really detailed notes because it's kind of hard to remember everything I say, especially like two weeks from now at the end of the chapter, when we go back and we start reviewing, you need to go back and look at all your notes. And here they are right here. Okay, you guys uh, ask questions as we go. Okay, much better to do that instead of the end, okay? Now the question is, is cubic better? I don't know. Is cubic better than quadratic? The only way to know is to do it. So let's go back to Desmos. Here we go. Let's go down to the fourth row. Okay, and let's type in Y1 again. So Y1, tilde, okay, go shift tilde. And we now, let me minimize this and it's always helpful to look at what, what cubics look like. So look at number 15. Okay, we have to type this in, AX1 cubed. Okay, so we got to type in A, X1, whoops, not there, sorry. Got to go back to Desmos. Got to press the right buttons here. Okay, there we go. So A, A, X1, make sure you type in X1, not just X, but X1, and then take it to the third power. So go shift six, which would put it up in the exponent or use a digital keyboard, one of the two. Take it to the third power now, this is a cubic. Okay, you have to hit the, the right arrow key now and get out of the exponent. If you don't do that, you're gonna stay in the exponent and you're gonna not end up with the right function. So use that right arrow key, get out of the exponent before you hit uh, plus sign. And then you go BX squared, so BX1, and then shift six to get in the exponent and square it. And then get out of the exponent and then uh, add CX, excuse me, CX1. It's always X1 because the table uh, in the table in the headings on the top of the table is X1 comma Y1. And then go plus D, which is your constant. Okay, so now you have that. There's your cubic. So now the question is, is, is the cubic better than the quadratic? Is the second degree, excuse me, third degree better than the second degree? And the way you can tell, uh, well, there's two ways you can tell. Look at the R squared values. For the quadratic, R squared is 0.9998. And the cubic, R squared is one. <laughs> and so it'd be really silly for me to ask you which one's closer to one. Would that be a silly question? Who's with me out there? Would that be a silly question? Okay, because in the third, in the cubic case, R squared is one. That right there tells you that it's better, okay? But now watch, look at the screen. I have a touch screen so I can zoom in. You, you would have to use the uh, plus minus buttons to zoom. But look, if you look here, which one goes through the points better, the red or the blue or the black? Which one's obvious, red, blue, or black? Okay, and everybody's saying blue and get the blue is the cubic, okay? And so you zoom in to see it on the graph uh, using the plus or minus symbols near the wrench in the upper right there. Okay, the blue is the best. Make notes on your paper. Blue or the cubic is the best. And write down, uh, let's, let me screenshot this right here uh, so we can get this in. You're going to screenshot your work from all Desmos and include it in your uh, just insert it into a Word doc and then, you know, submit it with your work today, okay? You can just screenshot all of this. Uh, easy to do. Or you can print it out in uh, Desmos too. It, it, I don't know if you know that, but you can do that as well. Uh, so go, go back, let's go back into our lesson here. And let's annotate here. Okay, so let me bring it in. Okay, so here's our cubic. 
So we have to write this cubic here. This is number 15. <clears throat> it's our cubic regression function. So y is approximately equal to a, which is about negative 5.6. It says round to the nearest 10th in the problem. So we're going to do that. So negative 5.6 x cubed. You got to just take these values and substitute in. B is negative 139.6. So minus 139.6x squared. And then C is negative 6,470.9. So minus 6,470.9x. And then D is a constant. So, and it's positive. So plus 230,121. And since r squared is equal to one right here, that's a very good fit. Okay, and that is a good thing. That means it is a good approximator. That's what it means. Let's pause here and ask questions on anything. So if you need me to go through any of the details again, now's the time to ask. Um, to get the to get the lines curved, how did you do that with the gear? Okay, so let me go back to Desmos. To be, you mean to be able to see the points, Matthew? Do you, do you not see your points on your graph? Yeah, turn your turn your mic on. No, it's just straight lines, like vertical lines. Okay, you know what? Let me share. Let me let you share your screen. Let me look at your function here. All right. Uh, let me let me change something here. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to let you share, and that way I can see your screen. Go ahead and share it. And let me take a look at your functions. Oh, okay. Hit the wrench. Uh, no, no, not that one. See the far, far upper right. Oh, right here. Yeah, hit the wrench. Now change, go to the x-axis values. Change the first value on the left uh, to zero. There you go. Change the other one to 20. And put your step at one for that. Step at one. Yeah, there you go. Just Okay, now go to the y-axis values. On the left, start at zero. And then on the, le on the maximum, put 230,000. Good. Now step 5,000. Good. Now go back to your graph. Just click on the click on the graph. There you go. Okay. Cool. Uh, zoom zoom in or zoom out. Zoom out. There you go. There. Oh no. Go zoom in now. There you go. Oh, slow down. <laughs> okay, now just <laughs> drag it down a little bit. Click and drag down. Don't use your little. Uh, okay. Now zoom out a little bit so you can see. Okay. Now. So now. If you zoom in, you'll see which ones actually zoom in so you can see the red and the blue. Now you see, see how blue goes through the points and the red doesn't now? Yeah. So blue is best. And guess what? Blue is which one? Cubic or quadratic? Uh, cubic. Right. And that's me. That's why cubic is a better approximator than the quadratic. Okay. Okay. So you have to adjust your skill using the wrench, buddy. All right. Okay, very good. Let me have my screen back, please. And then let me, we'll, let me, uh, does anybody else need to do, uh, do that too? And uh, for me to look at their screen to help you guys out, does anybody need that? Okay. Now let's do this. Uh, let's go one step further. Let's, let's approximate. Go to the, line five or row five and let's put in i don't know why i muted myself 
That's okay, Matthew. So go, let's uh, type in the cubic uh, regression uh, line. Okay, so uh, let me minimize this and take a look at it. So it's right here. Let's put this in. So go to the fifth one here and enter it. But this time you enter as y equals. Okay, so y equals this time. And enter in that function that you have up there. So negative, all right, 5.6, all right, x cubed. Now we're gonna enter the, the regression line itself and use it to predict, okay? Okay, just start, start entering that function, put your values in. So 139.6 x squared. Let's go ahead and type that baby in there. Okay, and then double check it. Make sure you use an equal sign on this one. And double check it before we do anything. So I'm just scrolling left and right on the on the equation and double checking the numbers. I'm just using my little arrows to go left and right. Okay. So now what we need to do is use it to predict. Give me a thumbs up if you got that equation in. Thumbs up on the screen here, guys. Rebecca, you're good now? No, my numbers are like a little bit off <clears throat> compared to yours, but I've checked my like my table a ton of times and all of them are right. But like the decimals on yours are like um, less than mine. Hmm. For me, well, one, one of us made a, an error in one of the digits. So, but are we are we very close? Yeah, like super close. Okay, well that's good. Let's um. I'm getting the same values as I did the when I did it originally. So, and I redid everything today when you guys are doing it. So, it's, it's probably, probably just a, you, yeah. And and it's very difficult, Rebecca, to find your mistake through here. I would have to look at all your values because, you know, how you cross check with someone else. Yeah. So uh, don't worry about it. If you're very close and you're understanding okay. the method and everything, I think we're going to be good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If that happened to you on a, a quiz or a test, and you're like you're like a hundredth off on your values. Like instead of 139.6, you got 139.5. I know that it's just a one digit on the data error and it's not a procedural error. So I'd give it to you still. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we can proceed. Uh, so now watch this guys, here we go. We're gonna, on the table here, we do not know what the loan value would be, let's say at two and a half years, cause it's not in the table. I mean, look at that. We know what it is at year two and year three, but not year 2.5. So what would that be? 2.5, because it's not just the average. It's not, uh, <laughs> this is not linear. This is cubic. So averaging wouldn't work. Okay, averaging wouldn't, uh, getting the middle number between uh, 2016 and 2009. I'm talking about these values here. Okay, that would not work because this is not linear data. So averaging would not work. So write on your paper here, guys, write down, do not average to get the midpoint between values because it doesn't work that way. It only works that way if it's linear, but this data is not linear, it's cubic and cubics uh, are different, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a table of values for this function. So for this one here, um, I think we can just go right to the gear guys. Son. So go straight up and we're, hit the cog or the gear, and where it says edit list. If you look at right here, if you hover right above it, it says edit, okay? Click on that. And then if you notice on, on your, your equation right here, you have three possibilities. You have the convert to table, 
you've got duplicate and then you've got delete. Okay, <laughs> don't delete. We want to convert to table. All right. So I just converted my equation to a table and it defaults to negative two, negative one, zero, and so on. Okay, I want to I want to enter in 2.5 and it's got to be whatever T if T is 2.5 it's got to be a number between 2000 209,000 and 216,000 it's going to be in there somewhere it has to be if since it's a good predictor so enter in 2.5 and notice that your y value here look at this is 212,983 and that's between the values between year 2 and year 3 okay and let me go back to the previous one here. All right, if you wanna predict uh, what's it like at the third quarter of the second year, like at 2.75, let's, let's, ch let's change that to, uh, to the next one here. Let's change it to 2.75, which would be in the third quarter of the, of the year. So 2.75 in the third quarter of the year or in the eighth month or ninth month, excuse me. So, and then uh, it predicts that the loan balance is gonna be right here, $211,153. So you could get uh, predictions at any number you want. Like if you, wanted, if you wanna predict at six and a half years, type in 6.5 and it'll tell you what the loan balance is gonna be. So let me screenshot this and put this in here. So you convert it to table, you enter the equation in and you convert it to table and you can get predictions. These are called predictions. Using the cubic regression function. Let's pause here and let's ask questions because you, you, you're gonna need to be able to do that. So you have to come up with the regression, you have to write the regression line, then you have to convert it to table and then you have to enter the values in that you want and then the y values are the predictions okay these these values right through here these are the predictions and these are t values this is time at two and a half years time at two and three quarter years time equals six and a half years and so on this one I haven't you know is at two years and by the way look uh notice that this one here is not the same as this notice that I just looked at that. They're not the same. Why is that? Use your common sense here. I say this is a predict predictor. Why is the at year two, this t equals two, not the same as in the table? Because in the table it says two hundred sixteen thousand six hundred thirty-seven. On the Desmos it says two hundred sixteen thousand five hundred seventy-six. They're not the same. Why is that? Uh, because you round in some of the numbers. It's not due to rounding, it's due to something even more simple than that. It's just because it was a prediction, right? Right. It's a predictor. It's not an exact tool. Write that down too on your papers. This is a predictor. This cubic regression equation only predicts and makes approximations. It doesn't give you exact values because it's not an exact tool. It gives you an approximation that's very close to the exact number, which is in the table, but it, it's not going to give you an exact number because it's, a, it's an approximation method and not an exact tool. So how come the R squared is one? Is it just, is it because it's so close to one that they just round it to one? Yes. Okay. Yes. That it's like a little bit. Yes. It's like, it's like point, uh, Nine 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 eight seven six five, and then when you round, that's that's going to be rounded to one, or it could be like five nines point nine 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 eight seven five or something like that. So yeah, it's so close to one, it says it's one. Got it. Good question. But this is an approximate regression equations, which are used heavily in science and predicting the future in business, science, every uh, all kinds of different fields. Okay. The regression equations are used a lot, okay? It's a major, major mathematical tool that is used. Um, are only approximations, believe it or not. They don't give you exact values ever. They may be very close, <laughs> but they're never exact, okay? All right, well, hopefully you learned something today. Are there, um, 
Are there any other questions on the lesson here that we went through on, on especially on regression? This is why I wanted to wait for today and, and take a dedicated entire period for this. Do you guys see why that I didn't launch it last Tuesday? <laughs> I mean, there's just too much material to cover in one session. So this, this section is bigger than it looks. Um, and, and to really dive deep and really fully understand it and, you know, and be able to use Desmos effectively and all that. So, uh, okay, so when you're ready, I want you to scan all your work, including all the Desmos work. Okay, put it all together and get that into uh, Canvas. Uh, in Canvas, there will be a uh, review coming up today and later. I haven't finished writing it, so it's not in Canvas yet. Uh, but expect, write a little note to yourself in your calendar right now on your desktop. Uh, look into Canvas for review over sections one, two, three, and four. That'll be available later on today when I upload it and get it ready. So I have to finish writing it. You'll have uh, the rest of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to do your review. It's gonna be due Saturday night. And the reason for that is because I'm gonna give you guys a comprehensive quiz uh, covering the four sections. And instead of giving it to you on Monday only, I'm gonna publish it on Sunday morning whenever it's ready and give you two days instead of one day. I thought that would help you guys out giving you two days versus only one day. And instead of giving you, like, say, only two hours on it during Monday, I'm giving you the full two days to work on it. How does that sound? Okay, trying to give you a little bit more time uh, because I know you got other classes too. And, and I wanna see you guys do well because this, this quiz will be worth a lot more than the previous ones because this is a comprehensive one. Okay, uh, any questions or needs before, uh, before you tackle your other classes throughout the day? Okay, I thought you guys did really well today. Good participation, good work out here, guys. I'm proud of you guys. Uh, leave me with a big old smile, and if you need anything, you know how to get a hold of me, and I'll see you, uh, see you soon, see you next week, unless you want to get a hold of me through uh, either intervention or over the weekend if you need help just contact me and I can always meet you in the evening or, you know, whenever uh, to help you guys out. So you guys have a great day, great weekend, uh, stay healthy and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Feel better. You're welcome. You're thank, welcome. You. Thank, thank you. You're welcome guys. Thank you. See you guys. Mr. Ainsworth. Yes, Talia. Um, so for the Desmo work that we did on Tuesday, I wasn't able to capture it. So I can't turn it in on like the document that we had made, is it okay if I just turn in like what we did today on Desmos? Yeah, you know, I, I was afraid of that because I forgot to, at the end of the session on Tuesday, to show you how to print that out and, and capture it. And so yeah. I think that was partly my fault. So yeah, just capture what you did today. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then it'll be okay, I'll tell you. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good one.